Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, we have John Postel, who is known and loved by all as the one member of the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. The IANA acts as the uh, root of the Internet Registry System throughout the world, and John will be giving us one talk on the IANA. Well, thank you for having me today. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the uh, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. It's a very small group. It consists of uh, a little bit of me and a little bit of Joyce Reynolds, who's around here. She's, uh, Joyce Reynolds is acting as one of the co crack leaders of the Jesus Crack at this conference, so you should be able to find her. Um, as I said, uh, the Diana is the, the root of the assignment tree. It's a very, a very small uh, operation that then tries to delegate everything that uh, takes any time to do out to uh, somebody, uh, somebody else to do the work. Um, and we've had some, some talks here. The, uh, the internet yeah, is one of those uh, what we call regional registries, although it also provides some, some other global services. Um, there's the uh, right NCC is a regional registry, and the AP is another one. There's also, and those regional registries may relegate to uh, national registries or provider registries. Um, some national registries that have been established, there's potentially quite a few in Europe, but there's one for Brazil, one for France, that are assigned in protocols and used in the uh, operating internet system. The IANA deals mostly uh, with those things directly. Um, about domain names and, and ID addresses, primarily the IANA deals with the unusual cases. Most of the normal businesses handle very well by the, the, the uh, providers and national registries and the regional registries. They do both of the work. But uh, an, an exceptional request for maybe a very large amount of address space or a new top level domain would be referred to the IANA for some decision making. So the domain names, the, the kinds of things the IAN is involved in is, is uh, working with the, the regional registries to identify policies and, and practices. Um, uh, an example of, of a policy might be that, uh, say, only a four-year college is allowed to register in the EEU domain. Uh, in the registration area, the primary thing for domain names is checking on uh, new country codes. The, the United States involved in helping establish the criteria for registration. Often when people ask for IP addresses, they ask for a fairly large amount of address space without uh, a fairly sound justification. And so working with the regional registries to come up with criteria or uh, requirements for, for uh, what, is net, what information is needed to justify your request. And one of the things that, that became forced is uh, a new class A address space to individual uh, service providers, but not, not a whole class A, but only a part of one part to one service provider, and another part to another service provider. And this may bring up some issues in, in how programs have been implemented and whether or not they can deal with this kind of subdivision of an address space under a cyber technique. So we've set up an experiment using one class A address and, and allocating courses of the various service providers to see whether this will actually work out in practice. Next slide. Okay, so some of these other parameters is that the uh, IANA deals with directly. Uh, we basically establish some criteria for what the information is needed to, to uh, have one of these things registered. And there's things like the port numbers that are used under TCP the protocol numbers that are used in the IP, and so on. This is the whole registration process is very much a team effort in that the bulk of the work is done uh, by the regional registries and national registries and providers. Now, and it's, a, it's a very small operation uh, that tries to keep a little bit of overall direction of all the time. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if, um, apart from walls and vanishing and takeover and such like, there must be a reasonable limit to the number of countries that need register. You've got any idea how many you've got left to go? Uh, I think the question is how many of the countries are actually registered with a couple of the main names? 
I don't have any idea off the top of my head, but I think it's actually quite a few. I, I think we're probably at least halfway through the possible list of countries. It's probably more than half. The total FTEs is, is probably about half of FTE for the MAN operation. The funding for, for the two of us comes through our research contract with the uh, Advanced Research Project Agency in the U.S. government. Okay, but just a rough dollar figure, uh, curiosity. <laughs> Anyone know my salary? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, no, no, it's, it's in the ballpark of a couple hundred thousand dollars when you put it in computer time and uh, overheads of the university and all that kind of stuff. Please. Uh, this is a question. Uh, could you discuss just briefly the uh, the future funding models for the U.S. internet and uh, the issue of leasing? Under discussion with National Science Foundation, the, the funding agency for our operation. So that's really all I want to say about it at this time. But if whatever comes out of it, it will be very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> For some value is very reasonable. Um, are there oh and one more is my comment about funding is that a pure model based on allocation fees is inherently unstable insofar as you're dealing with, if you will, cemetery plot funding, that an initial fee has to maintain a registry entry for an indeterminate period of time. And the problem is that if your amount of new business dovetails off, you'll leave with recurrent business which doesn't have funding. So the issue is not really leasing, but it's more a case of what degree of recurrent funding people who wish to register entities with you need to provide to maintain that registered entry. So therefore I think this is issue is that registries do need, if you will, continuous resourcing to maintain continuous information. Well, there, there's, there's really two components of it um, for what we do. Uh, one is IPs, which really there's, doesn't seem to be any good model for uh, maintaining those entries right yet. Um, on domains, there may be something that goes along of having an annual re-registration fee where one would have to uh, make sure that their entry is returned every year. So that will help stabilize the, the model somewhat. And if it dovetails, I would expect that the, the demand on that service to dovetail also. So you, can, uh, you wouldn't need as many people or as many machines, et cetera. Okay, thank you to all the speakers. Appreciate the, the, the talks. And finally, um, if I